10 times members of secretive societies and organizations spilled the beans. Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Nature Snipes. 6. Jenny Mills People's Temple Jenny Mills, her husband Al, and their two children left the People's Temple in 1974. Previously known as Elmer and Deanna Myrtle, they rose to positions of responsibility within the ranks of the church. With Deanna serving as the head of the temple's publication office and Elmer as their official photographer, after they left the church, the husband and wife pairing became two of the most vocal critics also founding the Human Freedom Center, which acted as a refuge for other defectors from the temple. After the Jonestown tragedy, the center offered itself as a place to go for survivors. In February 1980, the couple along with their daughter were murdered in their home in Berkeley, igniting rumors that a death squad made up of previous members of the church had taken their lives. Evidence later showed that the sole survivor of the ordeal, their son Eddie Mills, was perhaps not as innocent as initially suggested, quelling some fears about the church death squads. 5. Leah Remini Known for her supporting role in the popular sitcom King of Queens, Leah Remini was also a member of the Church of Scientology. Brought into the church at the young age of eight, when her mother converted, Remini's decision to leave the church ultimately came down to her own nine-year-old daughter. One month after her exit from the group, Remini filed a missing persons report for Scientology leader David Miscavige's wife Shelley, who has not been seen since 2007. Since then, she has been an active opponent of the ideologies of the church and throws her weight behind cases against its members. She also produced a show about the inner workings of the religion called Leah Remini, Scientology and the Aftermath. 4. India and Catherine Oxenberg, NXIVM Catherine and her daughter India signed up for NXIVM classes that were advertised as workshops to develop their entrepreneurial skills. It was at these workshops that India was recruited into a secret society within the organization, which ultimately ruined her relationship with her mother. It took the pair seven years to free themselves from the sex cult. Catherine eventually penned a memoir about her experience trying to save her daughter from the, from the cult-like group to no avail. India eventually saw the folly in her ways. The group founder, Keith Ranier, was found guilty of racketeering, sex trafficking, and possessions of child pornography in connections with the group. 3. Janja Lalich, Democratic Workers' Party The Democratic Workers' Party was created in the U.S. in the 1970s by a collective of women led by Marlene Dixon. The party was one of the more controversial attempts to create a Marxist-Leninist party in the U.S., which championed secretarianism toward the forces on the left. The organization disbanded in 1985, but not before establishing a cult-like following for their primitive conception of Leninism and the Leninist Party 1 of the party members and defectors. John Jalali joined the DWP and was exposed on the range of strange requests and rules by which the party controlled her income and cut her off from her family entirely. She was ordered to pick a name and burn her belongings and was taken to book for spending time with her dying mother. Lalik has since become a sociologist and writer and has written numerous books about cults and coercion, exposing how these organizations work and recruit. 2. Joe Falacci, The Mafia, aka Cosa Nostra Joe Falacci, an American gangster who turned state informer in 1962, held a higher rank in the Mafia, equivalent to that of sergeant, and was a member of the Lucky Luciano's mob family. Convicted of drug-related charges and sentenced to prison, Falacci received the promise of death from Fido Genovese. In a flat panic, Falacci killed a fellow prisoner in paranoia-induced rage, then opened up about the entire organizations to the U.S. Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the U.S. Senate in retaliation to the death threats he received. Considered one of the most influential informants in organized crime history, Falacci was on a mission to destroy the underworld that had betrayed him and put a $100,000 bounty on his head. He had lost his wife and his mob family and consumed with guilt. He relied on government protection to keep him alive until his final days when a heart attack finally killed the rat. 1. Carlos Leather, Madeline Dora Cartel Leather, who dipped his toe into the criminal underbelly by smuggling stolen cars into Canada and the American East Coast, which led to his incarceration, quickly made friends with the wrong people. He soon became a key player in the cocaine import business, persuading George Jung to use planes to transport the drugs. 
Fast forward a few years when Leder had worked his way up the ranks of the Madeline cartel, where he fell out of favor with the notorious Pablo Escobar. He was arrested shortly after that and sentenced to life in prison. Authorities agreed to reduce Leder's jail term on the conditions that he testified against former Panamanian leader Manuel Noriega, who had ties with the Madeline cartel and allowed them to ship cocaine to Panama. Letter was placed under witness protections and eventually released from prison after serving his reduced sentence. He was deported to Germany, where he held citizenship through his father. This brings us to the end of our videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you will love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.